Hello. We are back again with our readings from the corpus of early Arabic sources for West African history. Today's reading will be very, very short. It's just a snippet from Ibn Battuta. Um, it begins with him describing the copper mines at Takada, and we're going to continue about halfway through this paragraph or section. Let's begin. The copper is transported from there to the city of Kubar in the land of the infidels and to Zagai and to the land of Bernu, which is at a distance of 40 days from Takata. The people of Bernu are Muslims, having a king named Idris, who does not appear to the people and does not address them except from behind a curtain. From this country they bring handsome slave girls and young men's slaves, and cloth dyed with saffron. Copper is also carried from there to Jajawa and to the country of al Muratabin and others. So the purpose of reading this short snippet is just to find early references to Bernu as the, uh, the new um, central region for the Saifawa dynasty of Kanemborno. Um, according to Heinrich Barth, it's also proof that uh, one can rely on the uh, so-called Royal Chronicle or Gergam of Borno to understand the uh, chronology of the kings of the dynasty. For instance, Heinrich Barth claims that the King Idris named here around the time of Ibn Battuta's uh, writing is, is actually, according to the, the, the same chronicle, uh, was the King of Bernu. It also hints at how, by the 1300s, the, the, the dynasty had already shifted to the other side of Lake Chad, even as they continued to fight with the Bulala over their original domains in Kanem and on the, the eastern shores of Lake Chad. It's also interesting as a brief mention of some of the uh, imports and exports of Bernu, which tied it to lands further west and north. So we know copper from Takata, which is uh, one of the Saharan um, regions that produced copper that was under the rule of Berbers. We know that copper from there ended up in Bernu. But at the same time, Ibn Battuta also mentions that uh, slaves as well as fabrics or cloth were exported from Bernu. We know all, of, all about how slavery and the slave trade was a, a key part of the uh, economy of Kanemborno, especially in these uh, the medieval period, it would seem. But um, we don't really know as much about this export of cloth. It would be interesting to see if this is uh, early examples of textile production for the most part, or is this textiles that were produ being produced in what is now the Hausa regions that had fallen under Bernu influence. Um, Either way, it's it's an interesting uh, interesting little mention of some of the other exports of Bernu and how uh, how the, the even the some of the rituals and associations of the king um, were well known. For instance, the king only uh, appearing from behind a curtain and not appearing to the people. Like we know, that is an early description of uh, the kings of Kanem going back even centuries. Uh, and long after uh, Ibn Battuta's writing in the 14th century. Well, we shall stop here and continue onwards with our exploration of Kanem Borno's history at a future date. Thank you.